Hi everyone, I'm Dylan Dreyer. It's so nice to have you with us for Today Goes Back to School. The countdown to the new school year is officially on and we have pulled together a team of experts focusing on everything you need for a successful school year. From how to save on must-have items to academics and much more. But first, in anticipation of the most wonderful time of the year, our Today Show family shared their favorite back-to-school traditions. Take a look. The one word I would use to describe back to school is exciting. New beginning. A fresh start. Relief. Sweet relief. I love a new possibility. I love new beginnings. I was a teacher too, and whenever September rolls around, I get that feeling in my stomach of the fresh season. I was the kid at the end of the school year who actually cried. So whatever the opposite of that feeling was of crying, that's how I felt every year when the school year began. Growing up, my favorite tradition was going back to school shopping. School shopping is always fun. All those new notepads and pencils and scissors. And can we please buy glue stick? Please, just this once. To this day, true story, I walk into CVS and I look at the binder section and the notebook section in the fall and I think I've got to get some notebooks and some binders. My sister and I would get matching outfits and we would set everything out that we were going to wear for the first day of school. I mean, from head to toe. We like to celebrate the beginning of the school year by having a family dinner. Talk about what we're excited about and what we're nervous the night before school starts. The night before school, maybe a family dinner. The girls pick out whatever they want. Inevitably, it's pizza, so everybody wins. Back to school is something to be excited about, and certainly they're excited. I like to get them a special backpack because they like to put their snacks in there and then more snacks and more snacks. And they get to decorate it and get to do whatever they want. We love making the first day of whatever grade they're starting. We love making that sign, taking that picture. They've got the fresh haircut, new clothes, the sneakers are clean, the backpack is clean, because then you fast forward to the end of the year and it looks totally different. We would go and we'd get the, the notebooks and the pencils and the trapper keepers and everything, and they were all excited uh, because school hadn't started yet. And when within six months, that was all out the door. I tried to give energy to my kids, to be excited the night before school starts, to say, you know what, this is going to be an awesome year. Ah, oh, I love bringing back those memories. Okay, so we have brought together a panel of experts to answer the most searched questions for back to school. I'm joined by NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar, Katie Hurley, a child and adolescent psychotherapist, and Kurt Russell, the country's 2022 Teacher of the Year. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Dylan. Thank okay, so having. some of the top questions, obviously, Dr. Natalie, we'll start with you, involve COVID. Mm -hmm. So what's the latest guidelines? What can parents expect when they send their kids back to school? You know, Dylan, I think I think the number one thing that parents should kind of be aware of going into the school year is what are your school's policies um, and what is their mechanism for communicating to you? I think we all can remember getting emails from the superintendent and this is our policy and we're following CDC guidance, but maybe we're modifying it a little bit. So I think going into the school year, it's important, especially as a working parent um, for childcare and things like that, to know what your school's policy is regarding you know, isolation and quarantine. Every child now, six months and older, is eligible for vaccination. So, um, you know, most schools obviously are not mandating that. But if your child is above the age of six months, um, they can certainly be vaccinated. And I think then the big question is about boosters. Um, pretty easy to remember if you think of the number five. Um, everyone over the age of five is eligible for their first booster if you had the original, you know, two okay. series mRNA about five months after you completed that. In terms of a second booster, if you're over the age of 12 and immun with an immunocompromising condition or you're over the age of 50, you are technically eligible for a second booster. A lot of parents are wondering right now about whether or not they're going to get the new bivalent vaccine, right? That's going to have the original Omicron strain um, or the original strain, I should say, plus Omicron. Okay. At this point, we have no information that children are going to be eligible for that up, you know, updated vaccine. Um, so kids, if you haven't been vaccinated at all, you're still going with the original series and okay. you're boosting with the original. Okay, but every school is different, so make sure you need to know what your school's, what policies, your school's are. policies are. Yeah, okay. so you're not, you know, caught off guard. 
Okay. Um, Katie, there's a lot of anxiety going back to school. Some kids haven't been in a classroom setting all that long. Um, I'm sending my son to first grade for the first time in a whole new school. So there's, there is a lot of anxiety for parents and for kids. So how can we ease it for everybody in the family? Well, I think the first thing, Dylan, is really just talking about it and being really open about it because a lot of kids from the little ones up through the college students are just experiencing a wide variety of anxiety and stressors. So just really saying, it's okay if you feel a little bit worried. I feel a little bit worried too. What can we do about that? You know. So um, one thing I talk about with little kids is creating worry boxes where they mm -hmm. can just kind of decorate a little box and then stick their worries in day by day, one by one. It's just a way of getting it out and really talking about it with a grown up or someone else in the family. Mm -hmm. um, with older kids, I like to talk about doing zones of control. So you know, worries. I always say anxiety lives in the past, the woulda, coulda, shoulda, or in the future, the what ifs. Okay. So if we can all remain sort of present in what we're doing today and we can say what's within my zone of control today today I can pack my backpack I can get my new school supplies you know um, I can cuddle with a grown-up I can read a book with a grown-up just things like that just sometimes just these everyday sort of strategies really help kids feel calm and you know always when parents or grown-ups in the home are showing a sense of calm that helps kids see that okay it's okay to feel worried but I can do this and it's okay for parents to express their worry to their kids Kids also within reason I'm assuming within reason yes I mean we don't want to put all of our you know global worries <laughs> onto our kids right but it's okay to normalize it and say yeah I feel worried sometimes too and you know what I do I like to take a walk or I like to just sit and pet the dog while I look at a magazine or whatever you like to do the more open we are about it the more kids learn that okay it's okay right. to have all these different emotions and I can figure out a way to get through that whether it's coloring mm -hmm. or you know listening to music okay. or getting outside okay and Kurt let's bring you in here because you are the 2022 yes. teacher of the year so parents have that back to school night they get the first chance to talk to their uh, kids teachers what should they be asking what what should they learn from that meeting Dylan that's a great question and similar to parents teachers are nervous as well right and so I had to talk to myself um, so parents should just be a cheerleader for their children um, you can do this um, let me encourage you. Um, what you are going to expect within the classroom is this and that. And so I think we have to be honest with our children as they go through school and making sure that they are comfortable enough, making sure that they know their um, classes, right? Make sure that they know the bus stops. Um, so take that anxiety off of them, as Katie mentioned earlier. Uh, it makes things more smoother, uh, makes things more accurate for our children as they go through school. Okay. Um, real quick, I just want to get to each one of you a, a tip that you have. Kurt, let's start with you. Be a cheerleader. Okay. Uh, that's the most important thing, be an encourager for parents, for their children. Okay. Katie? Be a good listener. I always say follow the 80-20 rule. Listen 80%, talk 20. Oh, that's good. And Dr. Natalie? I wish I could say it's just COVID that we have to worry about, but parents out there, one of the biggest unintended consequences of the pandemic was missing childhood vaccinations. Oh. Um, we already are seeing a lot of flu in the Southern Hemisphere this year, so flu is going to be a big deal for your mm. kids this year. Polio vaccine, right? That's in the news. Make sure your kids are up to date on all of their childhood vaccinations. So get back to the doctor. Get back to I know doctor. we all kind of skipped that yeah. for a little while there. Yeah. Dr. Natalie, Katie, Kurt, thank you so much for joining us today, and thank you so much for that great advice. All right, coming up, let's Get Organized. Real Simple's editor-in-chief is here with great tips on how to get your family and your home organized for the new school year. Welcome back to Today All Day's Back to School Boot Camp. And as summer days wind down, busy back to school schedules are starting to kick into high gear. And Real Simple Editor-in-Chief Lauren Iannotti has a few hacks to help parents and students set themselves up for success this fall. Hi, Lauren. I think we really need your tips today. <laughs> I know. And that's why I'm here. Listen, I'm living it, too. This is my life, and that's why I've got all these tips that are going to help you get in a good position to start that school year. And I love it. And just reading through these, I, I think organization is the general theme here, and it's key. And you say, first things first, have a command center in your house. What's that? Right. So rather than just kind of thinking of your, like a little corner of your kitchen counter as being the place where stuff happens, you need to designate a space. It should be centrally located. Everybody knows where it is. Everybody can access it, so they don't always have to be like, Dad, when is my mom? When is my big calendar, paper calendar, mm -hmm. I recommend, um, so you can flip ahead to months okay. ahead and get all the important scheduling stuff on there. And then have an inbox where all the most urgent papers come in, and then you can sort them 
but you want them to start there so you know that they're important. And then maybe have like some hanging file folders. I love that because it doesn't take up a ton of space. You can put it right on the wall. Right. And I just want to emphasize here, like it might not be perfectly beautiful. If you can make it beautiful, make it beautiful. <laughs> but it needs to be functional. And what it's right. going to do is just make sure everybody knows all the information they need to start their day. So whatever works for your family, just make sure you have it. Precisely. Okay, so I'm usually working during the whole get dressed for school thing, but this is a great hack to kind of have the week planned out for yes. kids. This is a great hack that we did in Real Simple where you take a shoe holder mm -hmm. and a clean one, a new yes. one maybe, <laughs> and you label it by day of the week and you put an outfit in each one and mm -hmm. you just look at the weather ahead of the week and you'll know and then just get it in there and they know seamlessly. They just kind of grab it and they can put it on. It helps them take some ownership over themselves. Mm -hmm. They learn how to like sort of dress themselves. And, you know, you can do it right from the laundry when you're folding clothes. Just mm -hmm. put them right in there so you save yourself steps. That's a good idea because I hate putting laundry away. So this way it just See? goes right on the shelf. Okay, so once the kids are dressed, it's time for lunch. Okay, it's time to get lunches ready and, you, and feed and breakfast. So mm -hmm. for breakfast, make ahead. You know, it's like take a little bit of time on Sunday or a little bit of time on Monday morning. Get up a little bit early. You can mm -hmm. have that quiet time in the kitchen. And make ahead breakfast. We have a great story in the magazine this month about breakfast tacos. Imagine like a breakfast taco mm -hmm. on a Tuesday morning, right? So you make them ahead, freeze them. Um, grab it. Mini frittatas, we've got all these great ideas. So okay. I highly recommend that because that'll keep them full and sated until lunchtime. Okay. And lunchtime is, is a battle. <laughs> we've talked about this. So I do not like making lunch. I just feel like it's it's never healthy. It's never yeah. quick. It's never easy. It's just... And are they there. actually going to eat it? And they, you know... Yes. So, so it's a pain point for me too. And mm -hmm. what we recommend is that you buy stuff in bulk and then you create a grab and go grocery basically okay. in your house. So they can just come up to the bins and be like, I want this granola bar. I want this chips. I want this Mm -hmm. these uh, dried fruit and then you also do it for fresh stuff for fresh fruits and vegetables chop it up and you're going to put it in your you're going to chop a whole bunch up for the week mm -hmm. and put it in the in the fridge find some space in the fridge and they can grab it and that also again helps them learn how to build a healthy mm -hmm. lunch themselves and it makes sure that they're getting everything that they need and you know they're getting what they want too so and it doesn't what they all want. come back home from school with them exactly. um, okay so when it comes to getting organized i feel like clutter just piles up on the table for me so how do we avoid the clutter so the the return home for from the things <laughs> yes. is always a challenge and you can come to your come into your house and see just like it's like a war zone there are yes. book bags everywhere and there are laptop bags and what we want to do is avoid that so we have all kinds of uh, strategies for entryway mm -hmm. it should be visible open storage pegs uh, hooks are great so the kids can put them on put it on put their coats on themselves baskets labeled for their book bags so they okay. know which one is theirs and there's no guesswork and mm -hmm. then the next morning when you're trying to get out the door you know exactly where everything is um, and then we could you can put these catch-alls on the on a, on a counter they'll just just for the small things you don't want to it to pile up too much but everyone can throw their keys if you have bigger kids with keys mm -hmm. sunglasses um, just the little things that they're gonna need to grab right on the way out the door masks great place for, to have masks if they're still wearing masks in school and you know, take the guesswork out of it, okay. right? And that's just, you know, it's, I know it seems very type A, <laughs> no, but you're going to help yourself. But if you have the option, maybe it'll actually end up in that option. 100%. So, yes. Okay. So homework is also a thing. I'd imagine staying organized so that homework is less stressful is a good idea also. 100%. Homework, my, my daughter is going to second grade and she is so excited to have homework. Really? Homework is a fun thing. <laughs> it's like it's you a, say that now. I know. <laughs> I think we make it less fun by like uh, putting stress on kids about mm -hmm. it. I think the way to make it, to keep them loving homework and to keep them doing it and make sure they do it on time mm -hmm. is to make it seamless and make it, make it set, them, set them up for success. This is a adorable like homework caddies. Mm -hmm. Everything that they need, keep it where they're gonna where they're gonna be doing the work. But it's also portable. So if like oh today we're gonna be at the dining table, you can you can buy a caddy and just stock it up, or you can DIY it. We have mm -hmm. a great idea, uh, real simple about like getting a shoebox and it involves toilet paper um, rolls, and it, uh, the kids would love it. They get to mm -hmm. you know color it themselves and everything. Right. And just what that means is they just they sit down and they just get get to it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have this other great hack um, about uh, time management for mm -hmm. kids because again all of these. things, Things, you're trying to teach your kids to sort of take ownership a little bit, right. little by little, and it's like kind of training for them and training mm -hmm. for you because you shouldn't be doing everything for them right. for their entire life. And this life, clock right? is a good way to do this that. Is a this clock is great. So you, you buy an inexpensive clock, and all you got to do is take a marker and sort of mark up what each hour is should be designated for. Okay. So maybe they get home at three. Three to four is wind down and snack time. Mm -hmm. And then maybe four to five is homework time. And then maybe five to six, I don't know, depending on their age, is bath time or maybe they'll help you prep, prep dinner or whatever it is. I love that. So this takes all the guesswork. I mean, I, you can kind of want that for yourself too. <laughs> yes, like, I know. Cause it's like, oh, it's play time. Oh, it's, it's doom scrolling <laughs> time for mom. Yes. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> I haven't done Wordle today, so I better <laughs> exactly. hop on that. These are such great tips, Lauren. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I can't me. wait to kind of do all this in my house. I've got just, two kids off to school. Just pick and choose. Remember, okay. not everything's for everybody and we don't want everyone 
sort of feel like you have to have everything clamped down, but it's just to put you in a, in a good position for mm -hmm. success in fall. I love that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. When we come back, it is time to tackle your back to school shopping list with strategies to save on some of the hottest gear of the season. Stay with us. We all know back-to-school shopping can be stressful, and it certainly can be expensive. According to the National Retail Federation, a whopping $37 billion will be spent on back-to-school shopping this year, which breaks down to $864 per household. So, what essentials do kids actually need, and most importantly, which ones are worth your hard-earned money? Well, there's no one better to break down what to buy than Grace Bastidas, Editor-in-Chief of Parents. Hello, Grace. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you, too. All right, we've got all age groups covered here. So let's start, obviously, with the elementary kindergarten age group here where lunch boxes and lunch bags are so important. Yes, lunch boxes. So this one's from Land's End, and it's leak-resistant and insulated to keep food cool for up to five hours. Mm -hmm. It's also thick and sturdy, so it protects sandwiches from getting squished, which no one wants to eat, right? <laughs> and my favorite feature is it has a little compartment on the bottom mm -hmm. that fits a water bottle, snacks, oh, or whatever little okay. extra you want to toss in there. So it has the compartments, which hopefully will keep your kids' lunch organized, too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and this comes in all different colors, I'm assuming. All colors, whatever patterns your kid wants. Okay, great. So naturally going with the whole lunch bag theme, the water bottle is so important. Why do you yes. like this one? This is a stainless steel thermos fun-tainer, and it's also vacuum insulated to keep drinks cold for 12 hours. Okay. And it comes in fun patterns that kids love, and it has a really cute little grip handle mm -hmm. that's perfect for little hands oh, to carry great. throughout yes. the day and keep hydrated. And, the and if your kid drops it, don't worry, it's built to withstand dings. Okay, so it's even okay to put milk in here because it oh, keeps yes. it cold. Yes, exactly. All right, perfect. Um, okay, now for the next age group, let's talk about backpacks. And, you know, I think it's time everybody gets a new fresh one. Yes. So this is from Jansport, and I had a Jansport backpack as a kid. And for good reason, right? <laughs> yes. Because it has a lifetime warranty. That still exists? Yes. Oh, that's yes. fantastic. So if it rips or the zipper breaks, send it back, mm -hmm. and they'll repair it or send you a new one. And this one is lightweight and fits all the essentials. It's great, because the books can weigh it down, yes, certainly. Exactly. So it's nice when the bag doesn't weigh a lot, and it's such a nice pattern, too. Um, OK, so for high schoolers, let's talk about some tech. You have some more expensive and then some more reasonably priced options yes we have headphones so my children have this um, this is a uh, wireless and noise canceling from puro quiet mm -hmm. and it has a long-lasting battery life and it's equipped with limited volume to protect young ears and nice. it costs 129 now you're on a tighter budget these from J buddies pro cost $35 have Bluetooth technology and also volume regulators so that mm -hmm. your kids can jam safely. <laughs> <laughs> and they're also wireless? Yes. Okay, because I feel like nobody wears wires anymore. No, so. <laughs> you want to move around, dance. So when you have, you know, all kinds of different technology, the iPads, the phones, everything else, it's nice to keep that all organized with the charging station. Yes, so this is the charging station. It's from Great Useful Stuff, and it turns any surface into a workspace. Mm -hmm. And it also charges five devices simultaneously oh, wow. and keeps unsightly cords hidden Away. Okay, so when it looks nice, you're more likely to use it, which I always notice. Uh, okay, so for college kids going off to school, there are some appliances you can keep in your dorm room. What do you recommend? I recommend this Hamilton Beach tea kettle. It's convenient, versatile, um, and it boils water in a flash. Hmm. So if your college kid wants to fuel up before class with a cup of coffee, tea, or even hmm. a speedy meal, ramen, oatmeal, pasta, whatever, <laughs> this will do the job. And the best part is that it turns off when it reaches a boil. Mm -hmm. So that should give you a little peace of mind, which old parents want. Yes, because you're not always thinking in college about, did exactly. I turn that off? I'm not quite <laughs> sure. Um, a lot of folks going back to school, you know, in the end of the summer, it's the end of August, and it gets really hot. So what do you recommend to keep cool? And dorm rooms can get hot yes. and stuffy. So <laughs> packing a fan is actually key. This one is from Dreo. It's a standing fan. It's slim. It's sleek. Mm -hmm. It could be tucked away in even the smallest closet. And your college freshmen will appreciate that it's super quiet, it won't mm -hmm. disturb if they're studying or napping. Right, because in college, any distraction can happen at any time. So it's nice to, to keep the, the quiet with the fan, too. Grace, thank you so much. Thanks so this much. This is wonderful and so helpful. So happy shopping for everyone. All right, coming up, join me in the kitchen as my son Cal and I take on a yummy lunch recipe. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back to Today Goes Back to School. We end our show today with a visit to my own kitchen. My son Cal and I whipped up a recipe from one of my favorites on Instagram, Amy Palangian, also known as Yummy Toddler Food. She also has a book called Food Play, which teaches preschoolers how to have fun making their own food in the kitchen. I always make her green pancakes for my boys. They absolutely love it, and I love to sneak some veggies into their meals. Take a look. It's another edition of Cooking with Cal. What are we making today? Green pancakes. With? Yogurt. I follow at Yummy Toddler Food on Instagram, and Amy uh, posts these amazing, easy, delicious, healthy recipes for kids. So this actually happens to be a favorite, right? Here we go. Can you peel a banana? Do you know how to peel a banana? Can you peel one? Yeah. Where is it? Yeah. Oh, oh nice. Okay. Nice. Now peel it. This? Yep. Pull it down. Whoa! You can peel your own banana and put it in the blender. Nice. That's my first time doing it. Is that your first time peeling a banana? You asked me. Good job. High five, Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to add flaxseed. Okay, here, Kevin, can you add cinnamon? Do you remember how to crack eggs? Uh huh. It's been a while. Brownie? No? Brownie, 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 brownie. Teaspoon? Oh, hot, my teeth. Get it all in there. One cup of milk. Stop! No, stop! That's it, okay. It's okay. Tired. That's okay. Terrible. Mm, so mean, so mean, so mean, so mean. Yeah. Do you want to try the spinach? Yeah. This is why we put spinach in the pancakes, because I can't get you to eat it otherwise. Yeah. Okay, put it on the blender. Or on the machine, whatever it is. Ollie, flip that up. Good job. Let's wow. plug in the griddle. This is gonna get super duper hot, okay? Some whole wheat flour. See how this is super healthy? Whole wheat? Now can I mix some? Careful. Yeah. Get underneath it and commit to the flip. Yes! That's okay. That's pretty good. Okay. Am I your helper, chef? You're my sous chef. You're always my sous chef. Press. Put all your strength into your arms and squeeze it down. That looks good, right? Keep going, buddy. Take this bite, mommy. Yes. Mmm. Yes. Mm. Yummy. Mmm. Mm. Do you like it? Mmm. Mm. Mm. For these recipes and more, head to today.com slash food. And it's healthy, too, if you want to sneak a bite for yourself. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Here's to a happy and healthy new school year. And remember, you've got this. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.